Hello and welcome to another episode of Dime Scheduler in under 10 minutes. Today I'm on a mission impossible because I'm going to show you how you can plan long-term projects using Business Central and Dime Scheduler. After all these years, I don't think we've had two customers that plan long-term projects the same way, so I'll have to stick to the basic principles. So let's have some fun and see just some of the capabilities of our GAN chart. Here we are once more in our planning tool, Dime Scheduler. And as you can probably tell, this workspace looks quite a bit different than the ones we used in previous episodes. This is because I set up this profile in particular to be used for long-term project planning. So you'll notice a lot of space on screen is used by our GAN chart component, which we can see at the top half of the screen. At the bottom, we can see our planning boards that is showing many more dates than usual. So we can see about a month's worth of planning for our resources, which we can see at the left-hand side of the splitter. And then we also have our open task list at the right-hand side that is showing all the work that still needs to be scheduled. The normal way of planning doesn't apply for long-term project planning. So typically we would drag and drop tasks from the open task list to the planning board and then we can finish uh, the job at hand. But for long-term project planning, we'll want to use the Gantt chart as a proxy to populate the resource planning. So to convert the project planning into a resource planning. So the first step then would be to create a project in Business Central and then send it over to Dime Scheduler. Here we are in Business Central, where we are looking at a project that I prepared earlier. Apart from a column and a few buttons and switches, this is all standard Business Central functionality. From a planning perspective, the most interesting area is the job tasks list, where you can define your work braiding structure that outlines your project's structure. When you install the extension for Dime Scheduler in Business Central, it will add a planning budget column to this list. This column allows you to define how long each task should or will take. And we'll take this number into account in the Gantt chart as well. At the bottom of the job card, there is a section for Dime Scheduler that allows you to configure the behavior of this project in the planning tool. And then more specifically, we will make sure the planning mode is set to the Gantt chart. In the previous episode, we focused on the planning board style of planning, but for today, we're going to focus on the Gantt chart. Assuming everything's approved, everything's good to go, we can then start planning and assigning people and other resources to the job tasks. As usual, you can navigate to the actions menu in the ribbon, expand the Dime Scheduler submenu, and then send over the job. And then we'll make sure to take into account the configuration items for this job, and then make sure the project gets into Dime Scheduler the right way. Back in Dime Scheduler, when we navigate to the open tasks list, we'll see our project 30 has been made available in this list. And then we can start planning this one in. Now, as mentioned just a few moments ago, the traditional drag and drop planning doesn't apply to long-term Gantt chart projects. So even if I try to do it, I cannot drag and drop it because that capability has been disabled for Gantt chart tasks. So we'll have to go through the Gantt chart to produce a resource planning, which we can do by right clicking on either task of our project, and then we can open the project in the Gantt chart. When I click this button, it will load the entire project, including the work brain structure in the Gantt chart at the top of the screen. So if I do that, we'll see at the left hand side our WBS, and then at the right hand side, the planning of our project. 
if this is the first time you load the project, all the tasks will be set to the project starting date. So it will look like this, which is obviously a uh, very incomplete planning. But then it's up to the planner to make it more accurate and realistic. So using drag and drop of the tasks, you can slide around and set the tasks to the right date. The duration or the length of the blocks are retrieved from the planning budget in that column in Business Central. So let's start making a planning that looks slightly more realistic. We can drag and drop groups so like so, and then perhaps even drag and drop tasks individually to make it appear like a waterfall structure. This task here, that's a, a milestone, which is a task with a budget of zero hours. You can also create dependencies between tasks and task groups. So if you hover over an, a, a task, you can create a dependency between tasks like this. And then you can create a nice dependency graph between all your tasks in the project. What you can also do and what's the, the power of this scan chart is also link or assign resources to your tasks. So that's where this assigned resources column comes into play. And then we can assign people to this project plan. So let's assign a couple of resources to this task to expedite proceedings of that particular activity. So we can double click on this column and start assigning and adding multiple people or resources to that activity. So let's assign Alex Turner. We're going to put him full time for the duration of the task and then also perhaps assign Johnny Moore and we'll put him 50% on the books because maybe he's a senior consultant, he is a project manager, he does need to be working full time. So let's put him part time on the task. We can save this assignment column and then we can save the project by clicking on this button, which will then not only save the project, but also create a resource planning based on the project planning. So when I hit that button in a second, it will create appointments between these dates for resources Alex and Johnny based on the units that have been assigned to those resources. So we can then redirect our attention from the GAN chart to the planning board. In a second, we can see right now at the bottom, we have new planning for Alex and for Johnny based on the duration of the appointment and also the unit percentage that we have assigned to those resources. So this style of planning comes from the GAN chart and the GAN chart is the driving force behind the planning. Let's say there has been delay, there has been a change of plans. The planner can always change the planning and then make sure the planning is accurate and make sure everything is up to date. Update the schedule and then you'll see the planning in the resource planning board will follow suit. Even if the planner decides to reschedule like so and then resets the planning to its original state, update the planning, you'll see it will reset and mix, assumes the best case scenario based on what you set in the project plan. As soon as an appointment enters the planning board, we will reach out to the underlying back office system, in this case that's Business Central, and make sure to write back this new planning data that we have produced from the Gantt chart. So we can right click on either appointment, go to the links section, and then we can go to our job card, which opens up a new tab in the browser and will take us back to this original project 30. And then for the job, we will have a look at the planning behavior at the bottom of the job card and apply whatever you specified, which should happen when we create a new appointment in the planning board. So in this case, we'll create budget job planning lines for each block that was generated by the Gantt chart. So we should see about six new records uh, appear in the job planning lines for this task 1010. So if I expand, our planning lines, we'll see three lines for Alex Turner and three lines for uh, Johnny Marr with their corresponding quantities that come from the duration of the appointments. 
also it is possible to synchronize the planning that you produce here with people's Outlook calendars. So I have signed in for Johnny Marr in his Outlook calendar. If you take a look at his schedule in Outlook, we'll see about the same schedule should appear in his uh, Outlook calendar as well. So this was just a first teaser of what the project planning way of things could mean for your business. There's obviously much more to it. I would suggest you check out our website, divescheduler.com, and maybe you will get a free demo. I'll see you in the next episode.